Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. I had an idea for a new quilt pattern, so I sketched out some of the dimensions, then I cut out some pieces, and this is what I came up with. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to build this into a big quilt. So let's go ahead and get started. Now this is not the finished pattern. This is just my sketches. By the time the video is done, there will be a whole free pattern that you can use to follow right along with. So it's the first link right below the video that says free pattern. For this pattern, you need six prints. We're gonna use one yard each and they need to variegate from very light to very dark. Now I'm using white, gray, and black, but you could use any color. You could use all shades of blue, all shades of pink. You could even use different colors mixed, but make sure they go from very light to very dark. It's always a good idea to iron your fabrics before you cut them. That way they won't be wrinkled and you can get nice accurate cuts. Now I've got all six of the fabrics layered up here. I can cut 12 layers. You might not be comfortable cutting that many, so only put as many layers as you feel comfortable cutting. It's important to line them up on your cutting board so that it's parallel or on one of these lines. So if your fabrics are laid out crooked on here, so not parallel to a line, and you cut a strip, when you open that up on the fold there, it's going to have what we call an elbow. It won't be a straight strip. So always start with your fabrics nice and straight on your cutting board. Now I'm gonna line up my plastic ruler with the lines that are on the cutting board, and I'm gonna use a weight here to help hold down the far end of the plastic ruler. It makes it a lot easier to cut. Now we are going to cut two and a half inch strips. We're going to cut 12 from each fabric here. And you might be thinking, that's a jelly roll strip. Can't I just use a jelly roll? You can't, even though they're the right size, because we need 12 of each print, and jelly rolls just don't come like that. Now we're gonna take one of each strip and we're gonna go right to the sewing machine. Now I have my prints in order, lightest to darkest. So I'm gonna start with this very, very light one here. And then I'm gonna take the next lightest one and I'm gonna put it on the right side of this strip. So I'm gonna keep adding strips to the right so we're gonna put them right sides together and we're gonna sew all the way along this long edge. Now I've got the edges lined up, the raw edges are lined up, and it's real important to use a quarter inch seam allowance and to make sure you don't stretch either one of these guys. We always have a tendency to pull the top one a little too hard or maybe the bottom one, it depends. Every sewer is different. But try to just lay them loosely on top of themselves and then stitch. Now we want to finger press the seam allowance towards the darker print. So for the whole strip unit, we're going to be pressing those to the right. So I'm opening it up and I'm just drawing my fingernail right down the seam there. And this makes it very easy to iron later on. And it makes sure we don't have any, what we call valleys here. So you open it up and then finger press like that. Then we're going to add the next darkest print and I'm just gonna keep adding strips onto the right side until we have all six sewn into a strip unit. The strip unit is all sewn together. And even though we finger pressed it, we do wanna iron it nice and flat. So I'm gonna lay it on my big ironing board here, smooth it out. And then I'm going to start with a dry iron and I'm just going to make sure that this is looking nice and straight. Now I like to get a big, I call it a yardstick. It's a four foot stick that you can get at Home Depot or any home improvement store and it's metal and it happens to be two inches wide. So we can put this on here and we can tell if our seam is straight there. So that middle seam is nice and straight and I'm gonna go ahead and steam it. Then I'm just going to make sure that these are nice and flat. When I know they're nice and flat, then I'm gonna add steam. 
So keep ironing and then you can keep checking with your yardstick. So you can, you can check every seam and make sure it's nice and straight. And the straighter you get this, the better your blocks will turn out in the next step. Now each strip unit should be 12 and a half inches. And it does look like that's how big mine turned out. So now we're going to cut this into 12 and a half inch squares. And I'm not gonna get real close to the selvages there because it's a little bit hard to keep this nice and straight. So I'm gonna move in about two inches. And I know it seems wasteful, but we've got enough excess to do that. And then I know my block will be nice and square. So I'm going to now measure over 12 and a half inches. So now I'm going to have a square 12 and a half inch block. I'm gonna be able to get three of those out of this strip unit. And then with the leftover piece, I am going to cut one strip at two and a half inches wide. And we're gonna save that for a fun little bonus border. So 12 and a half here. And then with this scrap piece, go ahead and get one two and a half inch strip unit and we'll just set this aside. I've got all the strip units cut into squares. I've got half of them here and half of them here. And that's important because we are going to cut these along the diagonal. Now this stack, we're gonna cut this way and this stack, we're going to cut the opposite way. So I'm just gonna slide those over there so they're out of the way. And then I'm gonna take my plastic ruler and I'm just going to go from corner to corner. So just line it up and cut. So we're gonna do that with all of this stack. Then we're gonna move on to this stack and we're going to go in the opposite direction. So it's real important to cut this one in the opposite direction. Again, right from corner to corner. Now we're ready to lay out the quilt. What we have here is two different darks and two different lights. And we're gonna do a dark row first. So let's start with this one. It doesn't really matter which one you start with, but let's start with that. Then we're gonna grab one from the other stack, the opposite one, and it's gonna go right there. And we're just gonna alternate the whole way up. And there's gonna be nine blocks in this row. Now we're ready to do a light row. And it's pretty easy to tell which light one goes here. So we have these two different light ones. It's either gonna be this one, which looks good, or it's gonna be this one. Now we know it's not that one because we wouldn't have cut it in half. So it's gonna be that one there, and then this one's gonna get turned around. Now we're just going to alternate the same way we did with the darks. So we're gonna do one of these, and one of these, all the way up. That's the last light block there. Now we've got some fill-in triangles. These are just nine inch squares that I cut in half and we're gonna put one at the each end of these rows here. And that is what we're making. We've got this nice row here and we're gonna make four of these and that'll make up the whole quilt. So I'm gonna go ahead and get them all laid out. I've got the whole quilt laid out and I know I said there were nine blocks in each row. There's only eight. There's eight of these triangles in every row. Now we're just going to sew one row at a time. So I'm gonna just overlap them a little and stick a pin in so they will stay together while I take it over to the sewing machine. So I'm just going to pick this up like that, take it to the machine. It's all pinned together so we won't get the pieces out of order. And this is the first seam we're going to do. We're gonna put this triangle onto this piece right here. Now the triangle is slightly longer than this. It's sticking off on that edge a little bit. So when we put it right sides together, these corners are going to meet exactly. We're stitching along this side here and this side is sticking off a little bit. And that's good because when we stitch this here with a quarter inch seam, when we open this up, it's going to make a nice corner there. So I'm just gonna stitch all the way down here, show you what it looks like. I 
I'm going to press the seam away from this patchwork part. And you can finger press it because this is a straight grain here. Even though this one's on the bias, this is straight, so it won't stretch too much. This is the next seam we're going to do. So if I put these right sides together, they are the same length, but you don't want to start with this corner right on that tip. You want to slide it that way just a little bit so that when we sew our quarter inch here, that little tip is sticking off. And you can put some pins in if you like. It's not a real long seam, so it's not that hard to match up. And let me show you what this end looks like. This end also has a little bit of that triangle sticking beyond. So that's where we're going to stitch is if I, if I put this seam allowance that way, you could see very clearly where we're stitching. Since it's folded, it's a little hard to tell, but the raw edges are lined up. So I'm just going to sew all the way off this far edge. So that seam, I don't know if you can see the threads there, is coming out right where those two are meeting. And that way when we open this up, this makes a nice line there. So we want to finger press this away from these patchwork seams. So we're going to finger press this one this way. So we're always going to finger press toward the plain fabric and away from those seams. So all the rest of the seams are exactly the same. So this one, you put it right sides together. And then again, don't make it meet like that. Slide it that way just a little bit. So just do this same procedure down the whole row. The first light row is all stitched together. And the black row is going to be done exactly the same way. Here's the black row all sewn together. So now we can take these two and sew this seam here. So I'm going to put them right sides together. And I'm not going to pin it because we've got all these little intersections that we can match. So I'm going to take it right to the machine. I'm just going to line this up here and carry it right over. So if you make the top edge match, and we're going to stitch right there, as you go down this whole line here, we've got seams to match. But the seam allowances are going down that way and up this way. So it's really, really easy. You can feel with your fingers if they are lining up. They're nested, so let me show you. Right here, they're facing different ways, and you can just feel with your finger if they're lined up. It's really, really easy. Now is a good time to do some ironing. So you want to be a little bit careful when you iron that you don't stretch this because it's all bias. So I've just squished it for my seam allowance to go that way. I didn't finger press it because it will stretch. So I'm just squishing it a little bit so it's going to face that way. Now when you iron along here, iron with the grain, which means this way or this way, so that you don't stretch it. We've got that whole first section done and ironed up, so we're just going to do that same thing for the other three rows and then sew them all together using the same procedure. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these patchwork strip units that we had left over and I'm going to sew them into one long border and I'm going to put this just on the top and bottom and then I'm going to finish up with one more border and I'm going to get it onto the quilting machine. I've got the quilt loaded onto the machine. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now for thread colors, there's only several options. I mean, I could go black, but I really don't think black will look good on here at all. So I'm going to have to go with either a really light cream or a gray. Now the gray is going to blend in the best. It's not going to show on most of these. It's not even going to show on the white. So that's what I'm going to go with is the gray. For the quilting pattern, I'm going to use these cat paws. All of the prints have either cat paws or little cats in them, even though you really don't see that when you see the whole quilt. You just see the color changes. But this is nice and swirly, and that's going to look really good on there. The 
quilt is all done. Really fun to make. It wasn't as fast as some that I make, but that's mainly because it's pretty, pretty big. So it turned out about 65 by 87. Really nice movement throughout the quilt. So we put a picture of this up on Instagram and we asked people, what do you think we ought to call it? We got a lot of great suggestions, but the best one seemed to be mirror, mirror, because you can see both sides here and it really looks like a mirror. Now I did finish writing the pattern. So there's a link right below the video where you can go to our website and you can see all our free patterns. So this will show you exactly how to make the quilt. And it was so much fun to make. I really wanted to see what it would look like in colors, not just black and white. So here's some really nice colors. This is made from batiks and these are from Robert Kaufman and I only used a quarter yard of each print to make this size. So that was a lot of fun too. Thanks so much for watching our video today. We hope you enjoyed it. Now, one more thing, we have a giveaway. This is a quilt that we made called Line Dance. We did a tutorial, we did a video to show you how to make it. It was made with a jelly roll and it's really easy to enter the giveaways. Just go to the link that says giveaway and enter your name and your email address and you might be the next lucky winner. Now, if you like our tutorials and you wanna support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would really help us out. Happy quilting.